Hello and thank you for joining me. My name is Kevin Conrado. I'm the Technical Support Supervisor here at TR Electronic and this will be a brief webinar on Encoder Cable 101. At TR we are passionate about sensors. Our agenda today. We're going to talk a little bit about noise and EMI, shielding, uh, proper cabling practices, cable length guidelines, twisted pair cabling, our TR cable offering, and we'll have a brief question and answer period. Let's begin. Noise and EMI. What is EMI? EMI or electromagnetic interference is any undesirable electrical disturbance that is produced and emitted by an external source. EMI can be generated by man-made devices like solenoids, electric motors, power lines, welders. All of these devices can wreak havoc on encoder position feedback. And that brings us to EMC, or Electromagnetic Compatibility. TR Electronic Engineers take all aspects of proper circuit design into consideration when developing new products, from uh, enclosure design, component isolation and orientation, and component quality. Poor circuit design can wreak havoc on measuring systems. So we take this very seriously. All products meet or surpass DIN EN 61063 transient noise emission tests. That brings us to the obvious EMI can be generated by natural or static or atmospheric events as well, such as uh, solar flares, uh, electrical storms, and believe it or not, snowstorms, which I did not know. Obviously, we can't do much to stop this kind of noise from occurring. However, a proper uh, EMC can ensure that its effects are minimized. So we're looking at a basic, simple diagram depicting grounding and shielding techniques, uh, as recommended by TR Electronic. Uh, up here, you see the zero volt bar with uh, the screen terminal for measuring cable. Uh, this screen terminal, um, there are a number of manufacturers such as Phoenix Contact, I believe, uh, Wago makes a screen terminal which is definitely recommended and it should be dedicated for measuring, sensitive measuring equipment. You can see that the shield is tied here on the machine side as close to the measuring system as possible and uh, on the other side again attached to the zero volt bar. Down at the bottom here you see the ground cable where the power cable lies and this is really important. The resistance of this ground cable should be far less the resistance of the cable screen. Uh, the idea there is to make a, you know, a more attractive path for electrical disturbances to travel across. We don't want that noise to travel across the encoder screen if possible. Recommended cable shielding. Ideally, the encoder cable is connected at the machine side. Again, ideally, the encoder cable is shielded, uh, sorry, is, is connected to the electrical cabinet's main or earth potential, PE, preferably via a zero volt bus bar dedicated to measuring system cable shields. Now, our encoder cables have their shield connected to the connector housing when, whenever possible. Uh, there are obviously different types of connectors out there. Some allow you to do this, some do not. Um, keeping the shield as close to the encoder housing as possible, that's, that's very important. There are some manufacturers of encoders out there that have a shield pin in the connector on the encoder housing. We don't recommend that. It, it, just, doesn't, it's, it, it just doesn't make sense to, to us to, to route any noise that the shield picks up into the encoder housing. Um, you you want to keep the electronic circuit boards on the inside isolated from noise as much as possible, so we don't recommend this practice. Now, I repeat the word here ideally uh, because this is assuming that the electrical panel has been designed to deal with uh, electrical potential shift and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, the shielding should be connected with low resistance to protective ground 
uh, using large shielding clips or the screen terminals that I mentioned before. Ground potential equalization. Now, it's imperative to avoid potential shift or offset between the electrical cabinet and the encoder housing via the encoder cable. Ground potential imbalances can result in equalization over the encoder shield if there's no other path provided. That brings us right back to that ground cable and how it has to have a lower resistance than the shield on the control cable. Now if you can't avoid the use of isolated grounds, it'd be, it would be wise to disconnect the shield from the encoder side and only connect the shield at the panel screen terminal. Uh, this will prevent potential shift from occurring over the shield but any noise that's induced in the control cable will be directed back to the panel and, and not the encoder. Uh, now there, there are some cases when the use of isolated ground is deemed necessary. Um, so I, I'm not exactly sure of those particular situations. I've never come across them, but I'm told there are. Now uh, back to the, uh, the screen terminals for the panels. There are, again, a number of manufacturers such as Wago or Phoenix Contact who make some really nice screen terminals. DIN rail mountable screen terminals. Cable length guidelines. Push-pull or HTL levels at 9 to 30 volts DC without inverted signals can go up to 100 meters at 100 kilohertz. Uh, TR Electronic has a number of uh, electronic, uh, sorry, encoders that, uh, that use these HTL levels uh, such as incremental, parallel, uh, and CAM encoders. Uh, again, push-pull HTL at 9 to 30 volt with inverted signals can go up to 250 meters. So you can see the, the drastic difference there with the inverted, sig inverted signals. RS-422 uh, with inverted signals up to 1,000 meters. Uh, now, uh, obviously, the higher up in signal frequency you go, the, the, the less length you have on your cable. So at 300 kilohertz, which is uh, a pretty standard limit for 5-volt incremental encoders from TR Electronic, uh, is 100 meters. You have Profibus at 12 megabaud up to 100 meters. DeviceNet 500 kilobits per second up to 39 meters. And you've got your Ethernet protocols um, such as EtherCAT, Profinet, Ethernet IP up to 100 meters. Again those are all under ideal conditions. Let's talk a little bit about Twisted Pair. So all TR electronic incremental and serial encoders use differential mode transmission or balanced pair. If, you, if your counter or interface card is capable of receiving a differential signal, use it. it. It's good stuff. Increase signal noise immunity by using twisted pair to counter signal crosstalk. If you use a cable with multiple non-twisted pairs, one pair can induce crosstalk into another, and, and it's actually additive along the length of the cable, so it gets worse the longer the cable is. So twisting the pairs counters this effect because with each half twist, uh, the wire nearest to the noise source is exchanged, so this minimizes the effect of crosstalk. And that brings us to TR Electronics cable offering. We have an in-house custom cable shop. We can make cables to suit your application, so you can give us a call. We'll talk a little bit about the application and determine what type of cable would work best. Our technicians, our experience. We have some technicians with up to 20 years uh, experience making cables for us. We stock standard sensor and encoder cable, uh, and we can ship same day if required. We actually have kilometers of, uh, of cable in stock at all times. We can offer low-cost alternatives. So if you have an application that uh, does not involve any um, EMI or, um, you know, the environmental conditions are pretty stable, there are no rolling fluids or oils or water, um, then we can certainly offer you a lower-cost alternative. Connectors. We have a number of connectors in stock, M23, M18, M16, M12, M8. We have some mil-spec uh, connectors, uh, and we also have shielded RJ45. Shielded RJ45 is definitely very important for industrial Ethernet protocols. TR has always been a custom encoder company, and we build the custom cables to match. You need it, we build it. You can contact customer care at trelectronic.com for a uh, standard 
uh, cable price sheet. Okay, questions. I see that one question has popped up here. It's actually a really good question. Um, is TR standard encoder cable high flex? Now that's a pretty broad term, high flex. So, well, our standard cable is cable tray rated up to 15 times the outside diameter. So it's technically not high flex. However, it is cable tray rated. There's a good reason for that. Um, it's because of the braided shield. Um, braided shield uh, cables are not typically suitable for high flex applications because uh, a braided shield is, is abrasive and it can actually wear away the conductors on the inside of the cable. Now that is unless there is um, an inner core or PVC PUR jacket between the shield and the conductors. Um, we, we can also get that kind of cable. Uh, high flex cables usually have a foil shield and we can provide this type of cable as well. So at this point I'd like to thank everybody for joining us and please feel free to give us a call or send us an email at trelectronic.com. We put our customers first and again we are passionate about what we do. We are passionate about sensors. Thank you very much and have a great day.